Can you hear me now? I have a, yes, perfect. Okay, let's back up then. Um, so the session is phoning it in. It's all about the brand new click to call module inside Engage Networks released on the 22nd of February. Um, so my name is John Smetowski. I'm a sales engineer for Engaging Networks. So my role is really to tell potential clients about the software, answer all their questions, fill out these really long RFP responses. They seem to be getting longer all the time. Um, and also work with partner agencies and other partners to keep them up to speed on the software. Uh, so that way you're able to help uh, your clients out as well. So uh, it, it was just released on the 22nd of February. Um, it allows you, your supporters, to call the contacts that are in our, m many of our managed databases. Not all of the managed databases are available in click to call yet. Uh, we have a list of that. It's actually in the support of the full list as to which databases are available. So it's, it's a, the concept is it's, it's just like email to target and tweet to target, except the action is different. So instead of somebody sending a message to their elected official or sending them a tweet, instead, they get called at the phone number they provide. We connect them to that office. So we call the supporter and then call the office, connect them together, conference call. They walk through talking points that are on the screen um, such that they can then uh, get the recipient of that phone call to perhaps agree to take up that piece of legislation. So the, the great thing about this is this provides another tool in the advocacy arsenal, which really comes all down to the urgency of that particular issue. So maybe time these when a bill is about to be debated. Uh, so you know, a couple of days before to let the LAs know because um, having um, walked the halls of, of Capitol Hill for the, the National Bike Summit for many years, um, that uh, that when the offices start to hear about an issue, they pay attention. And um, I've seen uh, members of Congress walk in the office and immediately ask their aides. How, much, you know, how, many, how many constituents have we heard about this particular issue? And so they want to know what's going on, take, take the pulse of their constituents. Uh, so, uh, so adding the click to call is a great way to do that. And certainly they've got plenty of people in their offices to answer those phones and listen to their constituents. And it, it helps the supporter express their passion about an issue because you know, when somebody's typing a message or sending a tweet, there's, there's, you don't have the inflection in the voice and, and that ability to tell the story and tell it dynamically and respond to questions that come back from the receiving party. So it's another way to extend that ability to magnify the passion uh, for that particular issue because the person's using their voice and literally putting it in their own voice, in their own words. Um, so that way their message is getting across and not may maybe just the boilerplate message inside your other actions. So it's pretty simple. Supporter enters their contact information. Yes, if you sent them to a page via email, that contact information would be populated into the page, reduce the friction. Um, just need to confirm that phone number and then we'll, uh, then the cool stuff happens. Uh, so um, uh, it's not yet available for custom contacts. Um, but may soon be. We just, we're also trying to figure out volume on this as well. So we've got a lot of, we're going to be doing a lot of learning as uh, clients start to use this. Um, so how do you get the click to call module in your account? Um, it is a, an account management request, so it's not something that's automatically turned on in client accounts. Um, and we are offering this as a trial offer uh, for our existing clients. Uh, meaning that we will add the feature to your account with no subscription fee for the balance of your current contract. There will be a, a, um, an add-on fee. Uh, I'm not sure what that will be yet. Uh, for other modules that are add-ons like peer-to-peer, -peer, events, uh, membership, um, all have a $4,000 a year price tag. I'm not sure if that's going to be what we're going to do with this, but there's also usage fees when it comes to click to call uh, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So, you, so even though the trial is free, you still have to pay for the usage because we have to connect the phone calls. There's costs back to us from Twilio to do that. So therefore, we do have to charge uh, for the calls. And I'll get to those rates in just a second. Um, this will then just be a simple amendment to the existing contract, acknowledging that you're getting the no, no um, uh, subscription fee for the balance of the contract and understand what those... Uh, rates are so that way there's no surprises uh, you know down the road of saying oh I thought it was free uh, now it's say it's not 100% free um, just the um, the subscription um, and then uh, somebody on the client support team will then go add it into your account 
Um, there's another process that we'll be doing to basically put money on your calling account, uh, but we'll build that in arrears, uh, so no worry. We just want to get a threshold for what your expectation is, because we basically have to front the money to Twilio on your behalf, uh, so that way as the calls start to come through. So here's a little bit closer look at that pricing. Um, so it is a, a, it will be fixed and variable. Subscription costs will ultimately be the fixed cost, and variable cost is really all about usage. Um, we, what we want to try to do with clients is establish what we're going to call a price cap. But basically, what, how much do you think you're going to use? And it takes a little bit of math. Uh, so the math is the call length, because the you know, call to a member of Congress office might take, might, the person might be on that call three to five minutes. Um, and there might be you know, 10,000 supporters who are going to do that. Um, and those rates for US and Canada are seven cents a minute. Now that's seven cents a minute times two because we're calling the supporter. There's one phone call. We're calling the legislative office. That's the second phone call connecting together. So 14 cents a minute times the expected duration of the call times the number of supporters. So that gives us that price cap. So that we then set notifications on there um, at 80% of, of, that, of that cap and then at 100%, uh, but then also planning an easy ability to say, no, this is awesome, keep going, up, up the cap for us. And then we'll um, a email uh, back to us will suffice to say, yes, keep going. So as we, don't want to, we, don't want you to, we don't want a client to blow their budget on one campaign or within the first day or something like that. So we just want to uh, be, be reasonable about how we're going to approach uh, the pricing. Um, let's see, anything else I've forgotten there? And it's subject to change because we're going to learn from this process. Um, you know, are these rates right? Is the math right? Um, are these different notifications right? Do we need to put lower notifications in there? You know, if it's going to go really fast and you're going to burn through that money quickly, then maybe we need to figure out a better means to do this. Uh, so uh, then the next step would be simply to design the actions. So good news is here, if you know how to use Page Builder, guess what, you already know how to do this um, because it's just another page builder page. A couple of, of, of different components inside, inside the, um, the C, actually, I'm sorry, this is a place where I didn't fix this, it is CTT. Click to call is the transaction type that will occur. Uh, so uh, it's now a new page type. Well, I'll show you all this to you in a minute once we're inside an account. Um, and it, it, like the hub and e-commerce and or which other one had a fixed workflow. Um, it is a fixed workflow when you set up the pages. So it's not create page one, page two, page three, drop whatever elements in whatever order I want. There's a fixed workflow. So supporter enters uh, contact information, moves to a page two where then all of the, the calling items occur. And then finally page three where there's an on-screen survey for them to say how the, the call went. Uh, and then autoresponder email can get kicked out um, and a couple actually actually new additions to the autoresponder email, which I'll cover later. Um, we've also, um, and, and uh, as Graham said, this, this was, as we developed this, we learned more and more as we got into it as to, well, we need to think about this. Um, like, uh, val we, we created new validator types for phone numbers because um, your U a U.S. or North America phone number um, is, is uh, country code of one plus an area code, plus an exchange, plus an extension. Um, uh, so we had to figure out a way to validate that such that we would get the format in the correct way such that Twilio can call that number. Um, we also had to do this for the UK. So country code 44 plus the whatever the phone number and actually phone number formats differ in London as the rest of, in the rest of London. So we had to figure that in there too. Um, there's an extra, car an extra digit I think in the London phone numbers. Um, I have all this arcane telco knowledge because I worked in telco for many years. Um, so yeah, negative 48 volts is what the, uh, you know, you get in, I can get into that stuff, really boring stuff. Um, uh, so this is uh, basically some new regex va validator. Uh, oh, the other point of this is you can then create a regex validator. So if a person is entering their phone number and doesn't know their country code, because uh, most North Americans don't realize that that one is actually the country code, uh, which we share with across North America. Um, uh, but other, other people might not think to add their country code. So you can actually write a regex validator to insert it into the, into the field. Um, countries available for calling um, initially are just going to be US, Canada, and the UK. 
uh, but then we'll look to extend that. And it's all about listening to the clients uh, who, you know, which countries do you want to, do you want to invade with your phone calls? Um, uh, sorry, there's a word that popped in my head. Um, so, uh, you know, what, what's necessary? Wh who, who do you need to call? So let's have that conversation and then we'll, we'll see about getting those, those added. And we had to start somewhere. Uh, so that's why we started with, with these three countries. Um, the other thing to think about is when you're building this page builder page, um, like the events page, like the e-commerce page, it needs a little bit more width uh, on the page. So if you, you've got a really narrow, um, you know, the um, area where you're dropping your text box and other things in, probably want to push this out around 600 pixels, 650 maybe, just to give it a little, a little bit more space than it needs. Because sometimes like if, when the events page, if you put it in too narrow, it starts to break things a little bit. You can, you can fix that through CSS, but if you don't want to uh, mess with the CSS when, in terms of how things are going to lay out on the page, probably just a little bit wider. However, this all then plays well on mobile as well. And I suspect more supporters might actually take these actions from a mobile device, because after all, it's a phone. Uh, as many people don't realize, you can, actually, you can actually talk into these things and hear people from the other end. It's unbelievable. Um, so I just, you know, just some consideration for, for the design treatment um, and what the template might look like. So once the supporter takes the action, what happens? Well, we write a transaction, as you might well expect, um, and it's called a CTT. Um, so click to call. Um, click to call target, I guess, is the, the last T of, of that. Um, it is already in Managed Supporters. It is already in Query Builder. And to the best of my knowledge, therefore, it would all be in the APIs. Somebody can prove me wrong on that. Um, uh, so what does that data row look like? I'll get that to that in a second. I've got my uh, file, thanks to Josh, uh, pulled up in, in Excel here to show you what the transaction row looks like. Um, so here's a couple of screenshots from Managed Supporters. So yes, it's another transaction type, which will display in the transaction history gadget. Um, little known fact, the transaction history gadgets, you can put in multi those, multiples of those into the Managed Supporter and then select different um, type different groups of transactions. So what I like to do is like put five or six of them in the Managed Supporters dashboard and then just have one show donations, another show uh, advocacy actions, another show whatever, um, just to, and then relabel them as well. So, put, so call one advocacy transaction, one email transactions, just so that way you get a different look um, at the transaction. So um, probably, oh, not too bad to read from there. So in my test account, um, um, I actually called uh, Don Byers' office. I live in Northern Virginia, so I called Don Byers' office in my test account earlier. Uh, and sure enough, um, that recorded uh, who I, I uh, had called there uh, for this particular action. Um, and then in um, Query Builder, um, it is under the, the, um, um, the megaphone symbol for all, where all the other advocacy actions are. And it has its own category. So if you want to select all of your click-to-call actions, or all of your email to target actions. It's got that same category, but then you can also select out individual actions on in Query Builder. So, um, the, before you rush off and do this, there's some downstream thinking I think, I think everyone should do. Uh, first of all, do you have the integrations with databases of record like Roy Solutions? Um, so, every time we're cooking up something new, we're talking with Sarah and saying this is what's coming. Uh, for anyone who uses Roy as their database of records, such that uh, she and her team can keep up with the new transaction format, it, get it through the API, get it to land in the right space inside client accounts. Um, so if you are doing any integrations, think about where, where you want to pull this data, or do you want to pull this data? Is it, is it relevant to your database of record? And then also, are you using profiles or marketing automation? Because you might want to create some new profiles around this, uh, because um, uh, so you need to get this map somehow, be, but I think there's some, some things to consider about a supporter who, who takes action uh, via click to call. That might suggest to me a higher level of engagement by that supporter. They're willing to use their own voice and take the time rather than, you know, sure, sending a, an email to Target is just you click and bye bye, it's gone. No, you know, not much more effort than that. But the supporter who, the supporter who might be a little more invested in your mission might want to think about how you want to group these uh, folks. So I, th I think some more profiles might be in order. Um, and you can do that across uh, the, the action types. So you know, maybe it's 
people who have sent four or more email to target messages and sent two or more uh, click to call campaigns um, to you know kind of kind of re-identify some of those those levels of of advocacy action supporters. But then also consider the follow-on actions here because you know like one of the, the things I like to say in demos all the time is the easy ability to link actions together. So start like so many clients do, start with that light lift of having someone sign a petition. They're saying, yes, I like your mission. Well, if they said that, then why not link them to a donation page? Instead of the thank you page, just kick them over to the donation page. Same idea here. Um, we don't the, the linking isn't quite there yet, uh, not the same as easily as it is in other page types, but that's, that's we're going to put that on the list. Um, um, but think about the next action you might want to select these supporters for because these are more likely higher, uh, at a higher level of engagement. So they probably care more, they're more passionate about your mission. So do, uh, do uh, reacquire them for other campaigns. And then also look at that usage because then if you need to rebudget, uh, for your campaigns, uh, you really need to really need to think about how quickly you're spending this money. Um, so uh, do better budgeting to to get you know to prove to the bosses that yes, this works for us. Um, oops, what did I do? Yeah, there we go. Um, so I'm going to go into Page Builder in a second, show you how all this how all this lays out. Um, yes, you can use your your existing templates that you have in your account. No reason to, to have to create a new one and many of your library components. All your text blocks are available. Uh, I think form blocks are available. There's a, the, the, actually, the form block pre-builds for you. It actually pulls in all the fields. It's, that's rare. That's cool. Um, so you don't have to remember, oh, I need country in there to pull it, to drag it over. It actually, it actually builds the whole thing for you once you build it. Because we know we're gonna, you're going to need all those fields to do the validation for that supporter to um, find the right contact. And also, we need the phone number in there as well. Um, but think about some of the other design treatments on these pages and um, the examples I have in my test accounts don't account for any of these things because it's that new. I didn't, I didn't go and add any of this other stuff on here. Um, but think about explaining the concept. So maybe a quick video from your director of advocacy on this, on this page. Say, this is a new way for supporters to call about this particular action. Or maybe um, have that video where that person's expressing the the emotion behind the campaign such that it puts the supporter in the right state of mind to then take the action and then f and then be consistent with your organizational passion on this issue when they call their supporters. So you know, give them a couple of tips uh, through that video. Um, uh, and particularly for first timers who are, you know, for, for the first time they've, they've taken this action, maybe do. Um, uh, conditional content on the page. So people have taken click to call actions before. They get one version of the page without the extra stuff, whereas people who haven't in the past, maybe they get a different version when you do have the explainer video. Um, there are um, on screen prompts built into this, which we'll see in just a second, which you can then customize for each action. So to provide talking points to the supporter and also um, just kind of directional information that appears on screen. So it'll say like connecting to your representative's office. And then there's actually a voiceover. Um, it will actually do text to speech for a whatever string you put in there. Um, and when Dan was doing this in test, he took a line from a Queen song and stuck it in there. And so it's kind of funny when that, that played through, you know, when you're on the call. So it, it is a computer voice that will read it. will be like, no, connecting to your, you know, whatever you want to say in there. Um, uh, the other thing I, I would think about on the talking points is we present them as simple radio buttons. Uh, I not radio buttons, um, as a bulleted list. Um, but maybe think about changing the styling on that to do a checkbox. So as the supporter is taking the action, they're on the screen. And so instead of these being bulleted lists, maybe it's a checkbox. It doesn't actually do anything. It just lets the supporter say, oh, I hit point number one, I hit point number two. Just think, just think about those things as put yourself in the seat of the supporter who's taking this action. Um, and then finally, there's a survey and an action submit button. So when they, you know, it's how did the call go? And there's positive, negative, uh, uh, and another button on there, which you can customize the labels on those as well. And then ask for some feedback, you know, it's whatever comments the supporter wants to enter. Uh, so where am I in this? Um, yeah, let's jump out of here and get into an account where you can take a look at some of this. Any questions so far about any of this stuff? Um, so, which account am I using? 
let's start with one where we've got it on screen. Oh, here we go. So again, this is, there wasn't a lot of embellishment, not, neither to the design or the fields on here. So I've already got my, um, my information populated. Uh, so I've got, um, and notice the uh, telephone format here is doing the plus one for country code and then my phone number. Um, and I, we have a, I, we stuck in a fake post, uh, postcode in here. Uh, so when I hit submit for this particular postcode, we actually, we're in our production environment. We actually had Anna in our, on our data team add Josh and Dan as custom contacts. These, they're now members of the House of Representatives. I don't know if you know, you know we, we appointed Josh to the House of Representatives. Um, congratulations, Representative. Uh, um, so, uh, condolences. I have some issues I need to talk yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I live in his district, so that, that's my zip code right there. So, I live in his district. Yeah. Yeah. So, when I submit this, just like any other uh, campaign, whoops, of course, you need to be up to date on your session because that was hanging around for a while. Okay, fine. Um, fine, we'll do it over. Um, Oh, well, we got the wrong thing shared. What's going on there? Oh, that's why multiple screens. Looks even better. Okay, now I can't see it. Okay, fine. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to turn around then. Oops, spill coffee. Nice. So I can reach us. Uh -oh. Ah, oh wow, that's tiny. Sorry. Um, there we go. And of course, there's no other population here. At least. Yep, watch me type. That's a great session. Uh, yes, good, I still have it saved. Um, so that's my postcode, my fake postcode. It'll look up my, my new member of the house and click Submit. And sure enough, it then does the lookup, as you expect, for email to target or tweet to target. Representative Josh Miller, congratulations. Um, and then we click Connect. Uh, it's in, these prompts that come up are customizable, um, so you can change any of the language in there. So it'll come up as a pop-up, um, and it's asking me if, yes, I, indeed, I want to uh, call this person. Um, it's then going to connect the call. Oops. And is it actually working? There we go. So I'm getting a phone call. I hear the little voice that, that's reading whatever we put into the, the form. Now it's calling the, the, le the uh, legislative aide. <laughs> Hello, is this, is this a Representative Miller? No. Oh. oh, is he at the lunch? <laughs> is he at the port committee meeting? Okay, thank you anyway, bye. <laughs> um, so uh, it was called did not go well because he was out to lunch yeah, at a committee meeting. Uh, so then I, um, I can then, f um, uh, something went wrong here. We can then fill out the, um, the uh, if the survey popped up, we would fill out the survey at this point. Um, so let me get a different screen up here. Oops, there we go, there it is. Um, There we go. Okay. Now if I can only read that myself. I don't want that one. Okay, make it bigger. And here is one of the ones I was playing around with earlier. So it's just another page type. Actually, let me back up on that. So um, inside page builder, click on new page. There it is. New button here for click to call. Um, and then when we go into that particular page, we jump inside here. 
Um, and notice it is a fixed workflow. So here's page one. We'll populate all these fields uh, into a form block on the form. So uh, all the, the uh, name and address fields will automatically populate those into the form for you. No reason to have to drag them over. If you do want to go through and edit it, same form block editor comes up. You can pull fields on or off. Like if you want to add, it, add the person's title into the form, uh, that is one five. Got it. Don't add them. Um, and then on page two, we've already placed the contact targets block. So if we hover on this, we see it is a call contact block. Over here in the tools, we have the click to call uh, section here. And sure enough, that's what that is, is that click to call block. This is very much like um, email to target, and tweet to target, where you have the ability to vary the messages. So if um, Representative Miller was my, my, uh, rep my representative, and he's already co-sponsored the bill. He might be doing a, a thank message as opposed to a, hey, get on board message. Um, so that ability is right here. Add the plus sign to add in the contact rules. And same contact rules you'd see in other uh, email to target, tweet to target, same idea. The database returns a value. Database returns specific contacts, same idea. Um, the default, uh, we populate in a little bit of, of contact information here. You can then further embellish this just as you would email a target. Push in whatever contact fields as well as uh, reference data is also available here. I don't know many clients under, know what reference data is. Reference data is you can import a table of data to, uh, about that particular district. So say 40% of children under the, between the ages of three and five in uh, Manassas County, you know, whatever, whatever those data points are, you can put import reference data, which then becomes an additional pool of, of merge fields into the body of that message. Uh, so that way you can be on message with data uh, when you're uh, having a communication. Reference data is available in email to target, tweet to target as well. Uh, I just don't know that a lot of people even know that it exists. Um, so we can then personalize that message. Um, and here's what you saw on screen for that confirmed call. Uh, so all that language on there, we populate all this in for you. Uh, but you can certainly change up any of this. There's a whole bunch of merge fields in here as well, like what the queue time is. Uh, what, I forget what that one is. It's how many people are waiting in the queue. So you can show, you give your supporters some expectation of when we might actually get the call through. Because yeah, this might be a very popular action, and you just you just ignited fifty thousand of your supporters to uh, to go after a particular member member of Congress on a particular issue. Um, the script uh, has got its own block here, so you can populate in what you want to for the for the script, um, and then think about maybe instead of just putting this as um, um, a bulleted list, maybe you want to do some other treatment there to let people do a little check off, just fill in the blank, fill in the box. Um, and you can also then do merge fields here as well, including the reference data. So if you wanted those, those data points to be in the reference data on screen for your supporter to say, to cite 20% of people and whatever, whatever that data is, you can merge that into the on-screen uh, messaging. And then here's the bit that the voice that I was hearing uh, the, the software say. Um, you can put whatever you want in here, uh, so that way um, you can put in lyrics from Queen songs if you like, uh, like Dan did. Um, oh, that's kind of funny here, the computer voice trying to say that. Um, so you can have, you can customize what your supporter is going to hear. And so this, all these, all these boxes here are customizable by the looked up contact. So again, if it's a, a thank and spank campaign, one message to say thank you, another message to say, uh, hey, get on board already. Um, the toggles here are to uh, jump over to uh, some additional um, fields here. Uh, like for social sharing, what the um, what what will display there, uh, what the buttons will say that are displayed on screen. So if you want to say we just put some default values in, so you have the ability to change that. But then also, um, if your supporter is attempting to call outside the hours for that legislative office, what message, what error message basically will appear. Uh, so if, if you sent out an email and they got home at late and then tried to call the office and it's after five, no one's going to answer, uh, whatever message uh, is found there. And then if there's no contacts returned for that particular contact as well. Now part of the setup of this is to define uh, some of those things. When you set up a new uh, click to call action, your first step, just like email target, is to select what databases uh, you're after. Um, 
I think they all populate in this list. Yeah, this is everyone. But there's limits as to which ones work with click to call. We'll, we'll get that sorted out at some point. Um, but then the click to call settings are where you establish those office hours. So you can specify uh, what those office hours are such that then that uh, office close message would appear. What's the time zone for that office? And then you can decide when to clear the queue because calls will queue. So your supporter will be basically waiting for the call to connect. So we won't call them right away and charge you the seven cents a minute. It's once someone's available, then call the supporter, get them on, call the, the, the office, uh, get them linked together, and how big that queue can go as well. Um, and then you know, when you want to clear that queue. So if the office is going to close at 5 o'clock, maybe we want to clear the whole queue, um, maybe five minutes before that, since no one, no one is going to be saying, oh, geez, I never got a chance to put my call through. I just might get cleared out ahead of time. Um, notification settings, uh, notification emails, just like any other page builder page, if you can um, send somebody on your team a message uh, when this is processed. And then the post call survey, um, just a simple call survey block where you can edit uh, stuff in here. We've pre-built a lot of this stuff for you, um, including what the, the button labels are. Uh, you can embellish those if you like. Um, and collect, um, and we'll give you a little sample as to what that's going to look like as you make changes here in the editor. Um, put whatever questions you want to in here uh, for your supporter to then submit that. Um, so when they submit this, um, this then becomes a uh, CTT action. Let me get over to my other screen here. Let's slide this over. So here's the magic decoder ring for all the transaction types. Um, blow that up. So all the way down here at the bottom, C2C, click to call. And then what's peppered in these columns, uh, similar to an email to target or to tweet to target as to what's in here, uh, who the contact was that was called. Um, I'm not sure if. Yeah, I'm, I was hoping we might put call length in here, but we don't, because I think that's data we'd have to get back from Twilio, and I don't think we'd push that in the transaction. But there's, um, there are some management reports uh, from Twilio that um, I know we get them, and obviously there's going to be some mechanism for us to share to give you a report as to how many calls, you know, what days, those, you know, date and times those calls occurred. So that way you can understand how you, how you spent your money and what we're billing you for. I'm not sure what access you'll have to review those in real time. That's <coughs> something we need to figure out. Again, this is brand new. So, so we're kind of we're rolling it out to see how it works and get some feedback on it and um, take it from there. So what do you guys think? Very cool. Yeah. Uh, very cool. The phone number is going to be validated. Oh. So that's a separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a new validator. So if you go into pages, alerts and validators, I always, whenever I come in here, I'm, I'm looking for alerts and validators. I go to components every time. I, I completely miss the fact that alerts and validators have their own space here. I do it all the time. Um, and then click validators, and it's a new validator type. So when you click new validator, um, validator type here, new one in the list, required phone number is what that is, and then you can put the messaging in to say that the phone number wasn't appropriate. But then the, the logic behind that will then, for US, um, yeah, I have, to, I have to reread how it actually works. But I think we look at the country value and then insert that, which, okay, sure, there could be a mismatch on country value. Like, you know, like um, I still have my Boston cell phone number despite the fact that I live in Virginia. It's the same idea if somebody had a a US mobile, uh, UK mobile phone, but they're now living in the US. We have to think, think that through as well. So there's always something to mess up your, your, uh, your validator somehow. Humans. Yeah, humans, darn those humans. And then you just, what you would toss into the page is just whatever phone field you already have. Yeah, whatever phone field you already have. Um, one thing that might, have, um, might not have been obvious to everyone, this was the February release last year. In the account data structure, um, when we put in the field types, um, we put some new um, HTML input types in here, way back last year, including email, tel um, 
email and telephone, because these are basically HTML5 um, uh, field types now. Um, so you might want to just go back to your and change up the, the input type to telephone, just so it's HTML5 enabled. And then use, and then when you go into that field on the form, do, 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 private click to call. Um, there it is. So, what will when we when this you automate when you build this, we'll pull in the phone number. We'll actually apply that validator automatically. So you don't have to think about it. Um, and so when we go in and edit this block, that's what I was trying to do. Um, there we go. And we click on phone number. Sure enough, it's already got the required phone number one applied to it. And you can create multiples. So if you are you know, doing stuff in multiple countries, create one that'll validate against um, North American phone numbers, one that'll validate against UK phone numbers. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, some other things that I thought about. Get back this back. There you go. If I override, so you send me an email and ask me to click the call and repopulate it with whatever phone number I have on file, and mm -hmm. I override that. That's used for the call, but then that also now overwrites my mm -hmm. phone number. Mm -hmm. field. Yeah, because we're submitting an action with the yeah. values on the form. Mm -hmm. um, so other, other things that I would think about, again, more downstream stuff to think about when you're building these. Um, is, the, again, this is a more engaged supporter who's going to do this. So why not take that opportunity to ask him to do more? Um, just keep it going. Um, uh, maybe acquire more information. Now, when, in, we drop that form block in. We put in, we don't put title in there. We don't put suffix. Uh, we don't put any custom questions in. But feel free. If you, if you want to acquire more information about the supporter, after all, they just took action or they're about to take action, um, why not try to acquire a little bit more information? Um, Think about you're going to be quite, you've, a lot of organizations don't have phone numbers on file for a lot of their supporters. So this is definitely an acquisition tool for said phone numbers. Um, but if you do have any text messaging campaigns, I know HRC does this all the time, um, that maybe you want also want to put in an opt-in question here to, for people to say, yes, opt me into your text message alerts for important actions. So, because you're now acquiring phone numbers for people who may not have them for, take the opportunity to think through, hey, how else might we want it? What else might we do with this phone number? Um, and that's uh, kind of the second point, the text opt-in. Um, also think about Supporter Hub. Um, this isn't really a, a gadget that would appear in the Supporter Hub, but, but what other ways, um, let me just check one thing on this. Um, with the Supporter Hub, you can put in, um, you can put in post action information into the supporter hub. Let me just get out of the screen. Get out of the screen and roll on down here. Did we think? Yeah, we did this. Smart. Um, so this this little thumbs up icon. In case you're wondering what that was, uh, this is where you can put in information that'll populate into the supporter hub about this action after somebody's taken it. So if I take this action, then I go into my supporter hub. I'll see that I took action. And then we can construct the message using some, some merge fields in here. Um, maybe we say, you know, thanks for your participation. Thanks to you, we got 50,000 calls put in about this very important issue, and therefore turned the tide, and we got the, the action passed or whatever. So it's a way that your supporters in the, um, in the gadget inside Supporter Hub can look at all their past actions and then review what, you know, to, to look at their impact. We call it, we call it the My Impact Gadget. Um, so they can look back at all the actions they've taken part in. What, how did their effort help you as an organization, help you push that, that mission point forward? So, uh, so yes, you can. there is some integration there to the Supporter Hub. Uh, and then the last point, let me get back over here. Um, there we go. Um, it, since this is a, an action edit that writes as a CT, CTT, um, then think about uh, using market animation workflows or just simple uh, broadcast campaigns to thank those supporters for having taken action in this and then guide them on to uh, the next action. Um, and then inside the autoresponder email that's built into these, 
you have some new tools to add into the autoresponder email. So if they didn't, say, complete that survey as the final page, maybe they, they just they didn't, they had to get on something else, you can include a reminder to fill in the call survey, as well as a link to call again, because um, maybe the first time that, uh, you know, it's, it's all about urgency and building that, that cascade of, of uh, constituent um, requests uh, to, to legislative offices. So sure, why not and say, well, we know you just say action, but it's becoming even more important. So, so drop that link in there. Or encourage them to share it with their friends as well, to get their friends to take action as well. So um, what questions do you have about click to call? So this is the lightning round for Stump the Sales Engineer. Um, uh, and again, this is brand new, so I, I default to say I'll get back to you on that uh, if I have to. Again, just to review, trial offer for existing clients. So no subscription fee for the duration of your current term. We'll have you sign something to say you, you understand that and you understand what the price will be uh, after the term is, is up and that you will pay the usage fees, which are seven cents a minute times two because call the supporter, call to the office, and then, then times the amount, times the length of the call, times the volume. Page builder, that's why we built page builder to make building new stuff that much easier and then that much more consistent from page to page and a new transaction type. Think about not only the integration point, but then how to use this to uh, engage that supporter in additional campaigns. Any questions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so all the, all the, uh, the data points that are in this, the, the, um, Political databases are available for merging. So, you know, as a member of the communications committee, this is, you know, you can merge all those fields in there, uh, both into the block that appears and then the on screen bullet points. Um, and then also think about uh, use of reference data. So, that additional table of data you can import against each contact in the database to then give the exact statistics for their district to make it, you know, even more resounding for that official. Um, and then also vary the message as to who the target is. So, yeah, you know, not just thank and spank, but maybe committee member, um, you know, past history on, on similar issues. Um, um, or if it's, you know, a curmudgeon that hasn't supported your issues in the past, maybe just crank it up a little bit with your supporters. Maybe that's a great place for that video to say, this person in the, you know, go ahead, you know, <laughs> light the fire. <laughs> Um, get them to take action. You know, yes, yeah, sure. okay, so some poor intern in the, off, in the uh, member's office is going to take that, take that call. But, hey, you know, they're going to say, oh, this person was really, really irate about this. So, who knows? Who knows what, what effect it will have? I mean, all the, you know, having um, spent many years in Massachusetts, it was always easy to go to the Hill and lobby for things like bicycling infrastructure and, and, and all things like that because, easy to, to advocate with a whole bunch of liberals for, for liberal causes. It was like shooting, shooting fish in a barrel. That's not a great, uh, sorry, that's a very inappropriate uh, uh, metaphor. Um, uh, yeah, that animal yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, but, um, but the, you know, having spent a lot of time talking to those, you know, those you know, 18 to 24 year olds who are working in those positions, um, they're well informed, and they're going to take the message back to the member. Um, having seen it, you know, happen when the member, you know, suddenly walks in the office and wants to know what the pulse of the constituency is. And so Ben's presence suggests to me that I'm out of time. Can you guys just really get live? Yes. Nice cool. Um, at like one thirty-five for like twenty minutes, there'll be a cool tool to launch your petition in that room. You can get there, and you can even zoom in. You can get up, you know, the terrace. And if you're, the terrace is very nice. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank you